Okay, one. Ojai. 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 When I first left school, my main aim in life was to be an architect, so I joined the bank, and in those days the banks used to put you through the courses. So I spent a couple of years in the bank and waited for my transfer to come through to go into the uh, premises department, as it was called in those days, and um, did my national service in the meantime. My mother had a nice little hat business, and I went in and joined her um, and started a whole new career in fashion. So I went through a semi sort of apprenticeship course and learnt pretty much the millinery industry from top to bottom. The Pope said you didn't have to wear a hat to church, which uh, just about wrecked the hat business and, and the government took the, uh, took the quotas off hats and the whole business had completely changed and at that stage we really had to start all over again into a brand new fashion business. We worked through several things like accessories and clothing and it was the Carnaby Street era so everything was was all ready to happen and, and uh, uh, young people for the first time were starting to get their own fashion. Brian Rochford emerged at the right time. It was the 1970s. It was a time when the girdle manufacturers were worried about their declining sales. It was a time when Barbara Streisand wore a semi-transparent dress to the Academy Awards when Cher was on the cover of Time in a semi-transparent dress and Rochford came onto the Australian scene with fresh dynamic swimwear that was sexy, it was representative of a way of life and he captured it perfectly. He used brightly coloured lycra. His whole idea was to through the swimwear gives some impression of what women were feeling as well as focusing on their body shape. Women wanted what he had to offer, sexy swimwear that showed something of their bodies. We were starting to see uh, women breaking away from the constricted uh, moulds of the 1960s. Rochford was the first to introduce swimwear with uh, soft cups, he introduced bikini separates and he gave women a sense of freedom. To the east, to a famous beach in this beautiful sun-drenched city by the sea, where well, the surf is good and the girls are pretty. So now my hope's grand old lady. Now Lee, she lives in Manly. Yo, you got that Stanley? Northern beaches, northern beaches all the way. Why, Greg, he's a lame coat boy. In the village or in the mall, from chats with Crosby's boss for Lavender Bay. Prior to working with Lycra, we, 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 we used some fabrics. One of the fabrics we used was a fabric called Habite, which was really a pocket lining, which had a great shine on it. And this fabric was uh, rather a sensational sort of fabric in that uh, um, it looked terrific on. The only problem was that you couldn't stitch it down so that it, so that it, would, so that it was permanently stitched, and the girls would come and buy these, buy these bikinis. They'd take them off and wear them down the beach, dive in the water and the stitching would come apart and the next, the next moment that there would be women coming in talking about, the, talking about their uh, uh, daughter's swimsuits falling apart and demanding their money back. Well, they got their money back but the daughters came racing back in as soon as their mother had gone with the money and bought another one. So, so we just had to learn to stitch better on that sort of fabric and that, and that, was, part of the, that was part of the progress of, of young swimwear being developed. We were experimenting a lot always with, with these Lycra fabrics and there was nobody in the world had any expertise of making this new stretch fabric swimsuits. We developed this fabric and got it into a whole lot of different colours 
and then that was a huge success and young people absolutely loved it and started to buy up this lycra fabric in swimsuits and it was just sensational. What Brian really did in Australia was that he deconstructed swimwear. He took what was coming from overseas, he took the um, the expertise of some of the fabrics that was happening on the market and he really um, developed and brought it into what was needed to design lifestyle swimwear here in Australia. He, de he deconstructed in a, in a way that um, reflected the lifestyle here, it reflected the beach culture here and he really created um, as he says, you know, he started that in Australia and, and, you know, the English had nothing to do with swimwear. The French were still pumping out their little bikinis um, and, uh, and they were very structured. And so what he did was he really created, the Aussie boy created uh, the revolution in swimwear for the rest of the world. Brian Rochard's clothes have appeared all around the country in all sorts of press, from suburban and regional newspapers to very high-flown uh, fashion magazines like Vogue. He's been in touch with, with trends, lifestyle trends. He responded to the disco era. He responded to the fitness craze. If jogging was in, in, in fashion, if aerobics were in fashion, if cycling was in fashion, Roch Rochford was there and he created the sorts of clothes that women wanted to wear. and right through all the eight years. Oh, hang on, when I had a shop in Melbourne called Mango Boutique, before I moved to Sydney, I used to sell quite a bit of Brian Rochford stock as well. And it's always been fantastic. Beautiful fabrics, beautiful colours. It's a pleasure to walk into this shop because it's always happy look. And that's how we like it. We've got the beautiful weather in Australia for it, for the colours and the designs and so on. And I just think we need more shops like this. It's fabulous. Probably the thing that gave us more kick than anything is we designed a t-shirt that said I'm a Brian Rochford bird. It was a red t-shirt with white writing across it. And if ever we saw an absolutely stunning, beautiful girl, and she really had to be 100% 10 out of 10 type girl, we gave her one of these I'm a Brian Rochford bird t-shirts. So and we were, we were, we were fat ever for on the lookout and, and, and we did it not only in Sydney but we did it in Perth and Adelaide wherever we had an agent and so we had people out trying to spot and trying to find these great looking people. Well of course these girls were getting photographed because they were such good looking girls and quite often they'd come up and they'd be wearing their I'm a Brian Rochford bird if they went down to the beach if they walked through the streets they had I'm a Brian Rochford bird and everybody in the country was trying to buy this t-shirt we were very, very tough about it and we would not sell it. We wouldn't and you know, we, we probably could have sold tens of thousands of them. Back in the early days of hats, nobody really promoted hats. No one ever really took hats out to the public. And we did a thing with David Jones and we did it first on David Jones Hat Bar where we where we employed a, a girl as a compare and we employed two or three models to wear the hats in the department of David Jones department store. The excitement, I can't tell you, the first time we did it, the first time we did it in Sydney and the first time we did it in Brisbane, the excitement, the hundreds of people, the front page photographs of, of, a, of, a, of the local newspaper of people turning up to see models dressed in hats and, and in those days there wasn't there wasn't really that much of a business in the you know in the model business. Most of the girls that were in the model business were ex Miss ex Miss New South Wales or ex Miss Miss Australias or or current Miss Australias, and so we used these girls. So apart from the fact of our hats were probably not too bad, the sensation of seeing these girls was just absolutely incredible, and that that was a 
that was a gigantic start of, 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 of promoting and getting, really getting um, millinery away. And one of the most exciting things we ever did, and, and I've got to tell you that going back in these days, flying was really quite an adventure and we, we did a fashion parade on a, on a DC-6 aircraft, I think it was a DC-6, it might have been a DC-3, but uh, flying from Sydney to Brisbane. We did a parade going at the airport, taking off from Sydney, we did the parade on the aircraft going up to Brisbane and we did the parade when we got into Brisbane at the, at the, uh, on the tarmac and then again when we went into the David Jones department store. That was just so sensational, I can't tell you, that was just such front page news and that started a whole new era again. And we used famous models, girls like Jean Newington and Victoria Shaw, Robin Skelly who became the international camo girl, we gave Elle her first job, Elle McPherson. When we look at what Brian's contribution to education has been, it's obviously been ongoing. I know that he was um, in at the beginning of uh, the Sydney College of the Arts when that was getting his set up 21 years ago. Unfortunately, I don't have um, tiny details about that, but I do know that he was um, very supportive of that course and he, he was in, in many ways instrumental in some of the things that were going on um, about their understanding of the industry and how it worked here. Also, he's been very formative in uh, supporting education in respect of taking students on work experience. And that's not just necessarily um, his support in New South Wales. I know that through the FIA and other bodies, he's supported education in many other aspects as well. And he's also been instrumental in taking on students when they leave into his, um, into his company. So one way or, or the other, he's been supporting education for a long, long time. And he's, he's um, one, of, one of a few people in the industry who can be depended on to give back what they get out of it. The front of this design trend in England were people like Quant, Sandra Rhodes um, and Bieber. And in Australia, we had people like Puracton. Um, we had, thank God it's Saturday. We had the In Shops, we had the Miss Shops, we had Brian Rochford, and a number of other people as well. And that lasted for a long time, that it was totally Australian look, in fact. You know, when we were selling in the States, you'd, 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 you'd take it into a shop like Macy's or, or uh, you know, Saks or one of those sort of shops and show it in there, and they had never really seen anything quite like it. They'd never really ever seen anything brief like it, because the Australian girl was wearing a fairly brief bikini. We never ever thought that the Americans would ever come back to a brief bikini. Now, of course, there is brief, and it's not briefer than ours.